Hi, it's Colleen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made a pair of 18th century pockets using some thrifted linens that I had in my stash. I'll also show you the process of making an 18th century under petticoat using a pattern found in this book, The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. Cover my face. So if you're interested in 18th century fashion, this book will be invaluable for you. I'm also going to tackle a couple of problems from other projects that I've made in this series. My 18th century shift turned out way too big, and in this video I'm going to alter it. I also made an 18th century bum pad that was a little too full for my taste, so I'll show you how I fix that problem. I've been busy at work making other accessories for my 18th century outfit. They're all complete, but it was too many things to include in one video. So I'll have another video coming up next week to show a cap, a fichu, and an apron. But for now, let's take a look at those pockets. I have a stash of vintage fabrics and I found these two linen dish towels and they are perfect for 18th century pockets. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make them so that this is the front of the pocket and then I will have another fabric that I'll uh, interline it with and then have the backing because this is pretty flimsy and it would just kind of collapse under its own weight I think. So I'm going to work on making a pattern that I found online like a dimensions I found online that said to go roughly 13 inches across the bottom, 8 inches across the top, 17 and a half inches long with a slit that's 8 inches long here and then you're going to bind the whole thing. The pocket fits on the square at the original measurements that I found online 17 and a half inches by 13 inches with an 8 inch slit. It looks huge and really I mean I'm going to stick a phone in there I'm going to stick a bottle of water right? That's the extent of, oh, and some keys maybe. It doesn't need to be quite that big. I just don't know how big is too big or how little is too little, but that is absolutely the least amount I think I can have width-wise because the, otherwise I'll lose part of that embroidery and I really want to salvage it. It's not on there evenly, but I'm going to center it on this central motif. I've cut everything out and I found a perfect fabric to interline and line that with, and that is this sort of heavier linen. I just did a burn test so I know it's linen or a cotton linen blend and I had it just sitting in my stash. To me that looks really good with this embroidery. So it's kind of in that same family um, tone on tone, right? So it'll look all right as a backing to the pocket. And it is sturdy enough that it will give that pocket some structure which it needed because this is very very soft. So I'm going to stitch these together um, with the right sides facing out, so wrong sides together because I'm going to bind it. So I'll just whiz right along the outside of all three layers and then I can bind it, cut the slit, bind the slit, and put on a waistband. Super easy. My stash failed me. I have lots of colors, I have lots of sizes, and lots of different packages of the binding, but I didn't have enough of a kind that was wide enough and a color that I wanted to use. Like I don't want to use bright orange or yellow or super bright green. I'm going to go ahead and use this twill tape. I did have a little experiment in coffee dyeing and it barely made a difference. Like it makes a difference but not enough that I want to dye five yards of it uh, and risk you know having it be sort of blotchy or whatever. So I think this is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use the twill tape as it is. So I sewed everything on, had a little bit of a dumb mistake, and that is I should have cut and bound the slit before I put the two pieces together because now that's going to be a pain. Progress update, it's actually looking really nice. I need to press it and kind of steam all that back into place, but here's the back side. It's not going as nicely around these curves as I would like, and I'm very limited on my hand sewing capabilities at the moment because of my wrist injury. So what I did was I machine sewed it on the back side and I went ahead and just took a little tuck uh, in both places to get that to ease around the corner. But on the front side, I left it free and I will hand stitch that and gather that and ease that in so that it looks nice and neat in these corners here. I also did the top the same way. So I cut the slit, I bound it 
on both sides by machine, but I left this little corner right here free and I will just ease that fabric around so that it looks nice and neat. But I'm pretty happy with how this is coming along. It feels like I can lose about an inch off the top here. I didn't film the ending of this because it really was just sewing on the binding and the waistband, but they turned out great. I'm actually really happy with them. I did end up cutting them down by an inch and a half along the top here, and there's still plenty of room for me to put my hand in here. I'll show you at the end of this video how those look when they're actually on, and I'll show you how easy it is to put stuff in them. You don't want to carry a modern purse with your historic outfits, so I know these will be put to good use. It was quick, it was easy, and I like the fact that there is embroidery on my pockets without me having to actually embroider anything. I'm really happy with this. Today I'm working on the under petticoat and the under petticoat is the first petticoat you would put on over your chemise or your shift. I'm following the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking and they have a pattern for a basic 1740s under petticoat. I mean it says 1740s but the under petticoats don't really change throughout time. They're just a basic petticoat. They say an under petticoat doesn't have to be as full as an outer petticoat. So you're looking for a hem length of about 100 inches. Fortunately for me, I found a tablecloth that is exactly 100 inches long. They recommend using a sturdier cotton or linen for the petticoat. So this is a cotton tablecloth and it does have some body to it. I did find this tablecloth at Goodwill and perhaps you can see it has a sort of a checkered woven texture to it. It's not heavy by any stretch, but it's not super lightweight or sheer. The benefit of using a tablecloth is I'm going to save a ton of time on my hem. My waist is 34 and a half inches and I want the length to be somewhere between my upper calf and my ankle. I'm going to go with 36 inches and then of course the hem length is 100 inches which is the length of my tablecloth. I got ahead of myself. I was excited to start this project and tore the fabric. Um, that's an easy way to cut it to length and have it be even is to just take a snip into the edge and then tear it and it tears nice and evenly right along the grain. So I just ripped it across the length and now all I have to do is pleat it to fit my waist and sew up a single seam in the back. But I don't have to worry about hemming it because the hem is already complete. And then I'm going to use this twill tape as a waistband. This twill tape was rescued from a sweater I believe and I pulled it out a couple of years ago and stuck it in my stash. You know it's green. I don't care that it's green. What's good is it's exactly two yards long and that's how much I need. So I'm going to go ahead and use this since it was free in my stash. What's really fun is that I'm going to use my new to me hand crank sewing machine. This is a 1923 Singer 15k and I'm super excited to take it for its first run on a project. And I thought that this would be a perfect project to do that on. It's just straight seams and that's all this does is a straight stitch. So if you can see from this picture there is a large sort of a box pleat that keeps it flat right at the front and then you pleat it with about two inch pleats for the remainder of your waist measurement. But the first thing I need to do is find the exact center of this petticoat which will be right here. And I'm going to go ahead and mark it with a pen that will erase with heat. So when I iron this, this mark will go away. Now I need to measure approximately three inches on either side of this mark. I love having this large cutting mat on my cutting table because I can just use it instead of having to get out another ruler or tape measure or something like that. Here's this half pleated down to 17 and a quarter inches. I use this handy pleat gadget. It's actually really cool. It came in some vintage sewing notions that I got and I am able to use this to very quickly pleat this up and pleat it evenly which takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So I'm going to show you how this works. You can probably guess how it works but I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm just going to stick this right where that mark is and flip it over and it takes up three inches every time. So that's the first one done. Now from the center you're going to pleat them this way like going toward the back on this side and on this side you're going to go the opposite direction. So you can see that these folds go toward the back of the petticoat. So I have to switch directions when I get here. You basically just take this little tool and fold it so that that pleat 
ends right where the previous pleat ends. So you can see right here, they're even. Here's where I ended up. It's exactly 34 and a half inches. And all of these pleats are even with the exception of the very last ones. I made them just a little bit deeper, but that little tool worked perfectly. That was a handy, handy gadget to have. So I'm glad I've got that. I will definitely put that to good use. I starched and pressed these pleats and I marked the center of my tape. Now I'm going to stitch that along close to the edge, allowing half of it to be able to fold over the top of this. I'm going to go ahead and get that stitched on real quick. Now I just fold it over and stitch again. To make this easier, I'm going to trim some of this seam allowance just to ensure that I can fold that over the way I want to. The waistband is now on. This is ready to close up on the back seam. Making sure that I have the right side in, I'm going to fold this and stitch along this back edge, leaving 10 inches free at the top in order to tie that around my waist and get into it. And there we have it, a completed petticoat. I will show you what this looks like at the end of the video. I mentioned in my stays video how I'm becoming increasingly dissatisfied with the shift I made from Simplicity 8162. And in the video about making the shift, I said, ooh, it's way too big. And so the more I put on and took off my stays in the fitting process, the more I hated how big this shift is. And I'm really sad because I beautifully finished all of the seams. They're all fell down by hand. It's a lot of work and whatever, but I can't keep wearing it like this. I'm taking out a full 10 inches from this shift, a full 10 inches. It's ridiculous. It's two and a half and then another two and a half. So that's five on the front and the back. And I'm, it's right at the center and I'm just going to go straight down to the hem and that's not going to look great, but no one's going to see it. It's just going to be me and it'll just be under my stays. And then I'm still, that still leaves me with a lot of room to move. And I will still need to put in a drawstring at the top. I'm going to measure and cut two inches in from this point, And then I will turn it right, uh, wrong side out. I'll unpick the facing. I'll unpick the hem. I'll sew it with a half inch seam allowance and then restitch down this casing and hem. And that should do the trick. I'm also going to flip it around and make the front, the back and the back, the front, because the other thing that was wrong with this, and I don't know if someplace along the way I messed up or if it was the pattern, but the f one side was shorter than the other. And that one side that was shorter ended up being the front. So once I put it on and then my chest lifted it up, it was significantly shorter than the back. So I'm just going to flip it around and let the longer side be the front. And then hopefully once I have it on, it'll be more even at the hem. That's the plan. I am not doing this on the old machine. I'm just going to whiz this up on my machine and I'm not going to fell it down by hand. I can't. So I'm going to sew it and serge it and call it done. But it kills me that I didn't try it on, like really try it on and assess it before I got to the point of finishing all the seams because I could have very easily made this adjustment at the side seams. But now I don't want to undo it at the side because I don't want to undo all of that stitching. The fit is so much better. I'm really glad I did this. There's a seam down the front and the back, but it's barely noticeable. I switched the back and the front. So now my hem is level much better and I don't have nearly as much fabric to bunch up. The neckline fits me a lot better because what was happening on the other one, it was so big that I could not keep it up when I was putting on the stays. It would fall all the way back, way down here. It would fall all the way down in front and I could not keep that even without a lot of tugging and adjusting. This should be much better, much easier. So I do think that these sleeves could have been smaller as well. I'm not going to change them at this point, but I will tell you that a new shift is in my future. I will eventually make one with a different pattern with lighter fabric and kind of fix this whole mess. But for 
an adjustment. This was easy and quick and I'm glad I finally did it. I've been thinking about it ever since I finished the shift. I was like, it's just too big. It was enormous. So this is 10 inches smaller all the way around and you can see I still have a lot of space. If you recall from my bump pad video, I was a little concerned about how big this was. And this has about 60% of the filling that the pattern called for. So it actually could have been even bigger. But anyway, I went ahead and stopped at this point thinking I could adjust it later on. And the more I am playing around with my proportions once I've got the stays and the chemise and all of that stuff fixed, the more I think that this needs to be adjusted. And I recently saw a video that Kathy Hay did where she made a tufted bum pad. So I decided that it would be pretty easy to tuft this and that will help control the loft. Because I am hourglass and curvy, I don't need that much junk in the trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. It's easy to reverse. This is a darning needle and it has a big eye to allow for, you know, a thicker piece of yarn to go through it. And it has a sharp point, so I'll be able to pierce the fabric. So this will make the job fairly easy. I'm going to go ahead and just go straight down through there. Flip it over, come up through it and go back down just next to it. It has to be enough of a bite to not rip through the fabric. So I'm gonna go straight back down and hopefully I'll come out somewhere close. Whoops, there we go. Okay, and now I can just tie that. Let's see, I gotta get my little difficult to be coordinated. Now I can just tie that nice and tight. And that's the good thing about using a cord like this is that you can really pull on it and put that right into a knot. Okay, so once I do that on all of these areas, that should hold it nice and flat. I'll leave a little bit of a string and hopefully it won't come unknotted. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> that is a massive improvement. I just can't believe the difference. It's about half the thickness now that it's been tufted. And you'll see at the end when I put all of these pieces together from this video, it lays around my hips so much better. I'm really pleased with that. And I actually like that little bit of sparkle from the silver. It makes me happy to see it, you know, kind of glitter a little bit. So here's the finished look. I have my newly altered shift, which feels really good. It was not nearly as much fabric to bunch up and wrangle and adjust underneath those stays. So that's great. I'm glad I did that. I have my stays, which I made in my previous video and they fit great. I'm still really, really happy with them. I have my under petticoat, which goes on under the stays. It feels good. It might be a little bit too long. Um, it's probably the length that I would want my over petticoat to be but I don't want my under petticoat to show. So I may end up taking some tucks around the bottom, which is a period construction technique, so that'll be fine. I think I want it about an inch or two shorter so that it doesn't show underneath my outer garments. And then I have my pockets, which I'm really happy about. You can see how those hang on the hips. You can really easily go in between the slits of your skirt and access your pockets. So these turned out really nice. They're big, but I think they're accurate to what would have been worn at the time. And you see, I can fit all kinds of stuff in there. Do I want to carry a phone in my pocket? Sure, easy peasy. Do I want to carry a tape measure in my pocket? Sure, why not? Do I want to carry a pair of scissors in my pocket? Yep, I got all kinds of room for those as well. And what about some yummy pink grapefruit candies? Sure, I can fit those in my pocket. I got room for all kinds of stuff in here. So I think these will be great to have on when I go to an event because I can put a bottle of water, my keys, anything else I might need 
right here and they'll go underneath the skirts. So pockets are very practical and they're super easy. It's a fun project to make. Now I'm still a little unclear on whether the, the bum pad goes over the pockets or under the pockets, whether it goes under the stays or over the stays. I just am not really sure. Um, but I did figure out I could put this on and tie it under these front tabs and that will keep it from riding up underneath my armpits. You can see though how much better this bum pad is since I tufted it. The proportions are just infinitely better than they were. I didn't know that there was this much to be done before you actually got to the finished product that everybody gets to see. The really pretty stuff, you know, the, the nice looking clothes that people ooh and ah over. It takes a lot of work to get to the point where you can even make those. But I'm really glad that I have made all of these things and I'm at this point in the project because after my next video where I show you those accessories, I'll be able to dive right into making the pretty stuff. And now that I have all these pieces, I can make as many pretty outfits as I want. So I'm looking forward to that process. That's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you see here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. You can also stay up to date on my channel and my projects by following me on Instagram. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you next time.